Hey everybody, today we're going to take a look at Captain Marvel, the 575th entry in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I might be exaggerating. Written and directed by Anna Bowden and Ryan Fleck, and starring Brie Larson, Samuel L. Jackson, Jude Law, and Ben Mendelsohn. Larson plays a woman initially known as Veers, who was found by the Kree many years ago with no memory of her past and trained as the ultimate soldier, and she shoots energy beams out of her hands. That's a neat trick. Her mission is to stop the invasion of a group of shape-shifting alien terrorists known as the Skrulls. Unfortunately, her mission goes tits up and she has to jump into an escape pod, which takes her to the planet Earth in the mid-1990s. And wouldn't you know it, she just happens to run into a young Nick Fury who, up until now, was blissfully unaware that life on other planets was a thing. And so they team up to defend the Earth from the alien menace. This is pretty standard MCU fare, and like standard MCU fare, I liked it. It was good. I would not call it one of Marvel's best to date, but it was pretty far from the worst. And even the low end of the MCU is still usually enjoyable. I think the only movie they've made that I would even consider bad would be Incredible Hulk. They are breaking some new ground here in that this is the first MCU film to be led by a female protagonist. Why that couldn't have been Black Widow, I don't know, but here we are. And while that is certainly important, that's pretty much the only new ground they've broken here. The story of an amnesiac trying to unlock the secrets of her past, that's nothing new. The fish-out-of-water story with an alien coming to Earth is nothing new. That's not even new for the MCU. Thor did that. And without giving too much away, the twist wasn't really anything new either. But while these things are not necessarily new, they were at least done well. And really, I can't ask for more than that. I do think certain aspects of the film might have been a bit less predictable were it not for the presence of certain returning characters, but they gotta tie this in with the rest of the MCU. What are you gonna do? And this isn't just a Captain Marvel origin story, it's also a Nick Fury origin story, and to a lesser extent, an origin story for the Kree. And given how much we know about these characters already, trying to surprise us at this point is pretty much an exercise in futility. Really, the only surprise is we find out how Fury lost his eye. Not at all what I was expecting. I like Brie Larson overall as Captain Marvel, although her performance was a bit subdued at times. And I do understand that's kind of the point of this character. She's been trained as the ultimate soldier, and part of her training is learning how to keep her emotions in check. So, yeah, that's reflected in her performance. I just was hoping for a bit more. Jackson was his usual awesome self. He and Larson played off each other very well. And they did a pretty good job of de-aging him, and de-aging Clark Gregg as well. Whatever technique they developed for Michael Douglas and Ant-Man, they are getting their money's worth. Mendelssohn was very good as Talos, who basically functions as the scroll leader, and due to the shape-shifting nature of the character, gets to appear with and without makeup. Jude Law was okay, I suppose. There wasn't really anything wrong with the performance, just the character didn't do all that much for me. And somehow they got a net freaking Benning for this movie. I don't know how they pulled that off. I guess they saw Nicole Kidman in Aquaman and thought, nah, we can't let DC outclass us. Probably my biggest disappointment was Lashana Lynch as Carol Danvers' best friend Maria Rambo. Not because there was anything wrong with her performance, quite the opposite, because she was really good and she's only in a very small chunk of the movie and I wanted more. She's smart, she's a total badass, her friendship with Carol felt very genuine, I loved every minute those two were on screen together, and if they make Captain Marvel 2, it just needs to be Carol and Maria saving the world. Fury can come too. And apparently we still aren't quite done with the Stan Lee cameos, may he rest in peace. And, in fact, in this one he plays himself, which was kind of awesome. The action sequences were a lot of fun, and given how MCU action sequences normally play out, I would be surprised if that was not the case. And they did a pretty good job of recreating the mid-1990s, with the flannel and the soundtrack, and, in fact, when Carol Danvers crash lands on Earth, she crashes into a blockbuster. I'm surprised they didn't have a Circuit City across the street. And I did enjoy the soundtrack very much, it's basically the music I grew up with. I was a little disappointed that Carol actually wears a Nine Inch Nails shirt for a good chunk of the movie, but there's no Nine Inch Nails in the soundtrack. Also, I don't think I'm Just a Girl really works for an action sequence. I like the song, I understand what they were going for, just... I'm sure there was a better choice. Now, normally I don't bother to talk about other people's comments on the movie, but in this case, I do want to point out one thing. 
And that is the claim made by a small group of people that Nick Fury was somehow emasculated in this movie. There is a very appropriate word to describe those claims, and that word is horseshit. There are times when I will see someone else's comments about a particular movie, and I will think, you know, I don't really agree with what they're saying, but I at least understand where they're coming from. And there are other times, like this, where I wonder if we watch the same movie. I did not see an emasculated Nick Fury. I saw the same badass we all know and love, just a younger and less experienced version of it. I mean, he did pick up this huge freaking alien rifle and started blasting the shit out of motherfuckers. What more do you want? What exactly was emasculating about this? He did the dishes? He likes cats? He freaked out when he first encountered one of the aliens? I don't care what kind of tough guy you think you are, if you and your partner are driving down the street, mind in your own business, and all of a sudden your partner sitting in the passenger seat next to you turns into a freaky looking pointy-eared alien, you're gonna shit your pants too. And if you saw something emasculating in any of that, you clearly have some issues of your own to work out. But anyway, Captain Marvel is not without its flaws. There are some times when it has that written by committee feel, and judging by the writing credits, it was. But I still had a lot of fun, there's a lot of good stuff going on here, and it's another solid entry in the MCU. Plus, we got to see Jackson come probably as close as he ever will to dropping an F-bomb in an MCU movie. And yes, that includes that post credit scene in Infinity War. Speaking of which, if you haven't seen it yet, and you should, this does have a mid credit scene and a post credit scene. One leads into Endgame, and the other is just silly. If you're a fan of the MCU, this will definitely whet your appetite until Endgame finally hits, so go check it out. And that's all I got to say about Captain Marvel. Till next time, take care.